What's up, you guys? This is Professor Ron with OneHourProfessor.com. And if you dislike your job, right now is actually a great time to look at your situation and decide exactly what path you're going to take. This is especially important right now. Uh, we're in the midst of a virus and a lot of people are working from home. And I think it's a good opportunity to kind of reflect and look at what it is that you do for a career. And if you're waking up in the morning, even while working from home and you really dislike your job, then that job probably isn't for you. And that's okay. I, uh, I don't like my job and uh, I don't think I'm gonna go anymore. You're just not gonna go? Yeah. So the purpose of this video is to give you a five-step plan to help you understand exactly what you need to do if you dislike your job to make it to where it's something that's actually fulfilling that you genuinely enjoy. Number one is to reevaluate your situation here, okay? So what is it that you dislike about your job? Is it that you dislike your boss? Maybe you dislike your job responsibilities. Maybe you aren't in the right industry. Maybe you just don't feel good about what it is that you're doing. Whatever it is, try to identify what the problems are. The reason why you're doing this is you are trying to figure out what it is in the future that you can avoid so that you don't have the same problem again. And I do wanna say for everybody that's watching here, take a second, even if you have to pause the video, I know while I'm saying this, you're thinking of something, right? There's something that you're like, oh, it's this. Whatever it is, just comment below. I want other people to comment, I want people to comment so that you see that you're not alone. There's a lot of people that dislike their job and sharing those comments I think will help you guys kind of cope with everything. So take a second, comment below and let other people know what it is that you dislike about your job as well. Number two is to understand your goals. Now, the first step to this, as always, I think everyone would guess this, is that you need to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's not gonna necessarily fix it all, but please do that. Uh, all right, so let me move forward. So really what you need to do when you're trying to understand your goals is figure out if your job is fulfilling. And if it's not fulfilling, which it probably isn't, you need to understand what it is that you wanna do in the future to make it fulfilling and understand what your goals are as a professional and personally that's going to make you happy. The key to everything with work and making sure that you're gonna be you know, motivated to work is working at a place that keeps you happy. You also, I think at this point, you should probably look at your situation and decide, do you actually want to work for someone else? Most people say, yes, I wanna work for someone else. And then when you say why, they say, well, the salary or the healthcare, or you know, it's, it's a lot more stable. Well, we just recently found out with the virus that it's not all that stable and a lot of people are losing their jobs. So this is a good time to reflect and say, you know what, maybe working for other people isn't the best thing there is, right? And that's just the reality. Doesn't mean you gotta quit your whole corporate and all this stuff right now. It just means you need to realize that maybe that's the direction that you wanna go. And I can really help you with that and we'll get into that in number three. So number three is now you need to make a decision. Do you want to start a side hustle or do you not? If you don't want to guys, it's not really all that difficult, right? You can just basically go out there, submit your resume, go into different industries, and keep aimlessly kind of trying to find that job that's gonna keep you happy. But if you decide that you want to start a side hustle and you want to have freedom and you want to have flexibility to do your own thing, like I currently do and like I started six years ago myself, it's a struggle, but it can happen. And you need to understand that you are capable of it. A lot of people are capable of it, they don't think they are. The key to this, you guys, is you need to start. That's the biggest thing. Just make sure that you start. And keep in mind that even if you start your own little side hustle, you know, it doesn't have to be a full-fledged business right away, but if you start your own little side hustle and it doesn't go really well, hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's good for your resume, right? That's going to be a really big positive for your resume. And for a future, you know, career change or maybe an industry change, maybe you have a really big interest in a particular topic, but your career's in like sales and you wanna to go towards this other topic, it's a really good way to showcase your expertise and show it to a potential new employer and say, hey, this is what I did here and this is what I know. And it can really open some doors. Okay, so action steps to a side hustle. You really need to decide exactly what it is that you wanna get into, right? First would be websites. I recommend websites because you guys, it is passive. So you don't always have to be actively working on it to make money on it. And it's something that you can easily do off hours. And you know, it's, it's a really great way. That's what I did when I was getting on my full-time job. 
I started with websites because I thought, you know what, if I just create a website, get over all the technical uh, you know, nervousness, if you will, and I create a website, it's something that will work for me even when I'm sleeping. And it really does, it genuinely does. So websites are a good option. You could also do YouTube if you wanted to. Um, there's some challenges there, but you know, YouTube's always an option. You could get into doing some actual consulting or contracting on something that you're more passionate about, or maybe it's exactly what you do now and you just wanna do it on your own, right? Regardless of the reason, the point is for you to be happy. And you could also do something like graphic design if you're more artistically inclined. It basically is, in the beginning, you just need to decide what it is that you would be passionate about and actually enjoy doing. It is really important that you are passionate about whatever it is that you choose. The reason for that is because I advise you, don't quit your job, do not quit your day job. What I advise people to do is continue to work at your day job. But after you're done with your day job, you know, you come home, maybe you're doing a nine to five, you come home at five o'clock and you had a bad day at work, that's great. That's actually a big positive because now you can use your, your disdain and your hate for your current job to fuel you to work at your other job and that other job is the one that obviously you own, right? So it can really help to make it so that you use your other job as a motivator and that, that you know, when you're looking at it, you're saying, oh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. It's your only way out. And that is a really, really helpful and really motivating thing. So let's say that you did decide to go with a side hustle. Number four is to grow your side hustle, okay? Again, you can go to onehourprofessor.com to get information on this that'll help you out. But really, at the end of the day, what you need to understand is that getting started is the hardest part. Since you've already gotten started, now you just need to grow it. And that actually isn't as difficult as it seems. You just need to consistently work on it. That's the most important thing here. Basically, what I always tell people is make sure that one hour a day, Monday through Friday, you are working on your side hustle, okay? That is very important because that all that momentum by the end of the week is going to lead to something. And usually, what I always say is just do it one hour a day, but what I find is that most people on Saturdays and Sundays, they end up working a heck of a lot more than one hour because Monday through Friday, they did all these things and then you know Saturday, Sunday, they're like, man, I really wanna do this other thing. And they start working their butts off and they put in six, seven hours on those weekends. And that's a great thing because that's when you can be really, really productive and your full-time job isn't gonna stop you. Now, I do wanna say, if you don't have time to grow your own business, because maybe, let's say you have a family, right? You have a family, you got kids, all this stuff's going on. The first thing that you should do is obviously like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, seriously, if you could right now, I appreciate it. But if that is your situation, what I think that you should do at that point is look into actually outsourcing some of the responsibilities that you have. Now, it is important to say you shouldn't just throw money at the problem, right? If there is a problem, you need to understand what is it that you can do to fix it first. And after you have that understanding, then train someone else on exactly how to do it. If you do that, and specifically websites, because I'm thinking about writers here, you guys, that's like really the way that I usually did it, was just hiring a writer to help me outsource. I, I would outsource the content to a writer, they would write it for me, and then I would just review it as the editor. It's a great way to buy back some time, and it's a great way if you don't have enough time to make the best use of your time because you're just paying someone else to write it, and then you're reviewing it, make sure it's good enough, and then you're putting it up onto the website yourself. But the point here is that it is crucial if you don't have the time that you keep the momentum going by hiring someone else. Make sure that you don't lose momentum. And really you should also, the one thing I always say, if you're gonna start a business, expect to work the entire year, a lot of work, and expect absolutely nothing to happen. That type of mentality is what's going to make you get through this because there's gonna be a lot of negativity in the beginning because it's hard to start a business from scratch. But I promise you, if I can do it, and I did, you can do it too. Number five, and this is really the last step in the whole process, is you need to quit your job when the time is right, okay? Some people say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to start this and I'm gonna quit my job and go all in. And I can say, wow, that was a pretty ballsy move. Holy shnikes. Right, that's not something I could do, but I like to take calculated risks, okay? So when I say quit your job when the time is right, I think that you should have savings, I think you should have an emergency fund, I think you should have all that stuff already set up so that you understand what is, you know, how, how long can I go without a paycheck to be able to be okay? Assuming no catastrophic things happen, right? That's kind of the assumption that you have to make, but you should do that. 
For me, it was about, I believe that I had nine months of expenses saved up. And I also had pared down my expenses. I had moved out of a condo into a pretty crappy apartment. I did a lot of things to sacrifice. And that is a big thing too. Make sure that you are sacrificing. If you decide that you want to leave your full-time job earlier, make sure that you're sacrificing some things to make sure that your expenses are down. Because in the beginning, it's going to be really, really tough to turn a profit in your business. And you don't want to rely on that money. That, that revenue to pay your bills. It's just not a really good idea. The thing about quitting your job when the time is right is that I don't necessarily have the best answer for you as to when that is. It depends on what your risk tolerance is. For some people, if they have three months of expenses in the bank, then they're like, yep, I'm ready to go, and they'll just quit their job. Some people need a year. My point is, and what I think you should do is before you even get into this whole you know, step five and quitting your job, just sit down and think, what would be appropriate for me? How long will I give myself with expenses and everything? How long will I give myself before I decide, okay, I have to turn back? Because you might have some failure, right? And that's going to happen. But as long as you persevere through it, that is, those are always the people that are most successful are the ones that are willing to go right into failure, go head first into failure, learn from it, keep moving, learn from it, keep moving. Because what ends up happening is after a bunch of different failures, you don't make the same mistakes anymore. And eventually you end up being successful. It happened to me. It's happened to countless people that I've worked with. So it really does work that way. So there it is, you guys. If you really hate your job and you're having a really, really big difficulty with your employer and you're just like not sure and you're kind of stuck in a rut, that is what you can do to get out of it. The key here is that you understand what is it that's going to make you happy and then do what makes you happy. Life is way, way, way too short to sit there and just work at a job you hate day in and day out for 30 years. It's crazy. That's kind of how they used to do it in the olden days, as I'll say. Nowadays, there's so much opportunity, especially online that I highly recommend that you take these different steps if you're in this situation and you know really implement them and take them to heart and, and think about it and move forward with it. So there it is, you guys. If you hate your job, that is what I recommend that you do. And I'm doing this based on experience. I was in this situation. I did not like my job. I couldn't stand my commute. And it got me super frustrated every day. And these are the steps that I took. And it actually worked out. And I really think it could work out for you as well. So if you're interested in learning more about me or want to know more information, you can go to onehourprofessor.com. And as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.